there's a, um, a story about um, in Hawaii, though, I think it was in Hawaii, where a prison, where a doctor did that, and I'm going to mispronounce it in butcher, so I apologize, the, the Hopanopo or something like that, where it was basically, he kept, he sat in his office, he was a psychologist that was supposed to, like, you know, help the prisoners reform. He didn't have one conversation with them because everyone else thought they were impossible. He sat in his office all day, and he meditated on the idea of, like, I'm sorry, I love you, please forgive me, thank you. Maybe in a different order, but I'm sorry, I love you. Please forgive me. Thank you. That's all he did. And all of a sudden, these these mentally insane patients that were hopeless cases, changes occurred and, and there was there was progress with them. So there were all these different examples that I've I've peripherally heard of. And I'm one of those people where I, I kind of almost feel like I'm I'm cheating people by by not doing it. I don't memorize exact details. I just hear the stories. I take it in. I have gratitude for it. I move on. And then I end up being on a podcast where I only give like loose details, but, but I can definitely validate remembering about the town as well. Let's, let's pivot again to gratitude. So you have called it an anchor that you can use gratitude to anchor your, your mindset. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Well, there, there's many examples I give, um, but whenever I get going down that conversation, it's all about finding a really good method that that really I'm all about dynamically like sinking your teeth in into this in a way that it just it leaves an impression it's like one of my favorite methods for my book I like to teach I call it the time lapse method and the reason I love it is because it simultaneously really instills gratitude on a dynamic level from your past present and future and and the way the method works is um and you can use any number by say 15 I, I write 15 things down that I'm grateful for Five are for my past, five are for my present, and five are for my future. And what I do is I then jumble up the list so that maybe the first list is a present thing, and then there's a past thing, and then a present, and then the present, and then another future. And then one statement at a time, I read through it out loud or in my mind, it doesn't matter, whichever one I want to do. And I just take a, maybe 20 seconds just to really feel gratitude for that statement. And then I move on to the next one. And the reason I strategically do this, and this is a tweak on an old method that didn't go even near this, this level of dyna dynamicism, that's a word. Um, the reason I do it this way is because my study and, and research on the human mind is we don't downshift very easily. But the gratitude that you can feel for past and present things has a certain level of potency and certainty because it exists or existed. You actually experienced it. Therefore, when you read the future things, the same certainty that otherwise would not have ex existed there, the same level of gratitude and positive emotion is there for the future things as well. So it's like you want the love of your life and you have a statement, I'm so grateful for meeting the love of my life. And you're reading that in a sandwich between the apartment that you currently have that you love and the cat that you currently have that you love or the pet or whatever it might be, there's just more power to it. So you're being strategic at the same time, you're just enjoying the moment.